I'm always looking for ways to optimize and speed up my editing workflow. That's why when Toolbox reached out to me, I was really excited to test out their new Toolbox Elite, see if it could help me achieve that goal. Toolbox is not sponsoring this video. They just sent me the product, their new Toolbox Elite, in exchange for my honest opinion and review. Toolbox Elite has a variety of different buttons, dials, and knobs that you can customize to make them perform specific actions. This will help you streamline the editing process by minimizing the need to constantly search the buttons and the button combinations or shortcuts. The Toolbox Elite is compatible with various creative software options. I personally use it for video editing and specifically within DaVinci Resolve and so that's what I will focus on in this video. I was actually searching for an editing keyboard solution and I always romanticized how tactile it must have felt to edit a film half a century ago when you didn't really have a typing keyboard and a mouse and instead had a dedicated tool to perform very specific actions like cutting. I have always felt that editing on a computer is a bit of a detached process. It's like with video games, you can achieve great results with a mouse and a keyboard. But say, for instance, you're playing a racing simulator with a keyboard and a mouse. Like it doesn't come close to having an actual steering wheel, a gearbox and like pedals. So do you need it? Well, not necessarily, but it can enhance your workflow and make the editing process way more enjoyable, I think. Definitely more tactile. After researching the market and considering some other options from other manufacturers, what really stood out to me about this one is its small size. It minimizes the need for unnecessary hand movements, which is a big plus for me. So to illustrate the difference, I recorded two time-lapse videos demonstrating unnecessary hand movements I made using a keyboard and a mouse. These small actions, they add up over time and can be quite time-consuming. So you can make your own calculations to see how much time you spent moving your hand across the keyboard. So one aspect of this product that I particularly like and appreciate is that each button has a unique shape it definitely helps with muscle memory. And all of the buttons feel clicky. It's really difficult to fully explain the tactile experience in words, but it's certainly a pleasing sensation when you use this device in work. Mine has this nice translucent finish. And initially I wanted a black, a matte black one. But after hearing some other YouTubers commenting on how fingerprints and grease are easily noticeable, I decided to go for this translucent surface instead. And still, it doesn't mean that you won't have to clean it from time to time. But yeah, it comes in three different color options. So matte black, smoke black translucent, and ivory white, which you can all check out on their website. I also really like that it's heavy, which means that once it's on a flat surface, it won't sleep at all. And the device comes with a USB Type-C port, which can be used to plug it into your computer, but the Toolbox Elite can also work wirelessly via a Bluetooth connection. And I appreciate that a lot, actually, because I hate when my desktop is cluttered with the cables and the cords. And it's got its travel bag. I particularly like that I can take this device with me wherever I go. I can use it at a picnic, at the beach, in a car, or anywhere else really. And while I'm not necessarily a fan of working during a picnic, <laughs> it's also not improbable. So it's nice being mobile in that way. So I went on their website and downloaded a single proprietary app called Toolbox Console 5, which is everything you need to get this going. You can connect the Toolbox Elite via USB Type-C or wirelessly via Bluetooth. Of course, I chose the wireless option. And once I installed the app and completed the pairing process, it quickly ran me through the key features and it took me almost no time to get comfortable with the app. It's got different pre-installed presets for all sorts of software options and I want to advise you to try them out first because I have to say that they really put a lot of thought into these presets as they work really well with Resolve right out of the box. And once you understand the logic behind their key assignments, you can simply adjust a few buttons to your liking. 
And that's exactly what I did. In fact, the out of the box settings worked almost perfectly for me. So after a few editing sessions, I figured out what I wanted to change and I created my own preset and I saved it and linked in the description so you can download it and try it out for yourself. And what's really cool here is that you can export your own presets and share them with your friends or import other users presets from their website. And this way you can explore different use case scenarios and layouts and see what you like better. You can also control the haptic intensity of the knobs and the dial. And I have set mine to the maximum because I really like the responsive view I get from them. Okay, so let me walk you through how I use my device and what functions I have assigned to some of these buttons so far. So this top button looked like a space button on my regular keyboard, so I thought it makes sense to make it my primary play and pause button. So if I click it, it triggers the playback. Next, my zoom in and zoom out on my timeline. As standard, it's assigned to a scroll wheel, which I didn't change as it made sense how they did it. Scroll up as zoom in and scroll down to zoom out. And clicking on the wheel fits the entire timeline on the screen. So this uh, center knob scrolls through the timeline and it does so exactly one frame at a time. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's a lot of control and precision here. This dial here skips exactly 10 frames at a time. So depending on how far I want to travel through the timeline, I use either the knob or the dial. Also, pressing into the knob is a simple razor cut. On a typical keyboard setup, you would need to use a combination of a command B or a control B. And here I really like how it's just one button because it's the one I use the most often, I would say. Simple as that. So deleting is usually done by hitting a backspace on your typical keyboard. And here I thought it makes more sense to assign it to this tall button so that once I made my razor cut, I can delete whatever I don't need. So these two custom buttons I didn't change and they act as my undo and redo buttons. So if I accidentally deleted something that I didn't intend to delete, I can just go back. Just like that. Or go forward in a similar way. And because I often work with slow motion and time lapses, I press up to change my clip speed, or I press down to enable or disable my clip. If I press right, it plays my clip forward and increases the playback speed if I press multiple times. So I can quickly scroll through my timeline. And in a similar way, if I press left, it plays my clip backwards. So this little button here is called the tour button and it selects all the entire timeline on the right of the playhead so that I can move the whole thing easily if I need to. Then this side button is used as your typical command button. So if you click on it, it will activate secondary assignments for each button. I have assigned some functions that aren't as vital as the previously mentioned ones, but are still used quite often. What's also really cool about this product is that you can assign macros, which are specific sequences of actions made up of multiple steps. Therefore, if you frequently use certain commands, you can combine them into a single button click by creating a macro. So being honest with you, I haven't checked out all the possibilities yet, but I'm pretty sure I'll be finding more as I play around with the different button combos. And you can even assign different actions for a single click, double click, or if you press down and hold the button, which is pretty cool. After using the Toolbox Elite for a few weeks now, I can definitely say that it's greatly improved my own editing workflow. And the device feels natural and pretty intuitive to use. 
And so I no longer have to waste time searching for the right key combination or a shortcut. I can focus on the creative process instead, which I always say on this channel that the process is the reward. So it definitely helps with that. One thing I can say is that the more I'm going to be using it, the more I will become familiar with it. This means I will be assigning new functions and new button combinations to it. As at the moment, I'm definitely not using it at its full potential. And there's a bit of a learning curve when it comes to setting it up and customizing every single button, but their user manual is very clear and easy to follow. And there are plenty of reviews on YouTube already, so that can definitely help you get started. This video is not sponsored by Toolbox, and everything I say here is my own thoughts and my own user experience. But if you do want to try it out for yourselves, the links are in the description below. So I am planning on using this device myself long term. I won't flip it or just give it away right away. And therefore I stand for my words. And if anything happens or for whatever reason I, I change my opinion down the line, I will be sure to make an update video and tell you all about it. Because now I feel kind of responsible <laughs> for having an opinion on this product. But that's it for now. And hope you enjoyed the video and check out the links in the description. Bye.